right now at the time of this conversation we're like getting ready we're like riding the the hill up to the very very tippy top peak of hurricane season uh, yep. i don't i haven't looked at the map this morning so i'm not sure what, if anything's going on necessarily but for people who um and i i i'm not exactly sure how to answer this myself so i'm interested in, in hearing what you say sure. for somebody who like maybe found like this this uh heard about independent claims like a week ago or when the hurricane adelia blew up and um are really really wanting to get into this what advice would you give them as far as like hey if there's a hurricane go to it or forget about hurricane season wait till next year get a bunch of training and licensing like what if they're like well i can go i can totally go i can get a license and i can you know get a crash course and whatever do you have any like suggestion for people who are like should they leap or not leap like if, i mean they're, they're they've got a week to prepare basically this is adjuster tv adjusters first this video is sponsored by Hag Education. Use code Adjuster TV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HagEducation.com. Yeah, that's a good question. It just depends, right? What do you want to do? Do you want to make um, like this occupation to be a lifelong occupation, or do you want to get into this? go down and make some quick money and then basically not work again, right? Because um, when a hurricane happens, if you have an adjuster license and you're saying you know what to do and they need thousands of adjusters to go somewhere, just like that buddy of mine four or five years ago, they're going to give you some claims they're going to send you uh, down there. If you're not prepared for it, you don't know what you're doing and you're, and you're thinking, well, when they hire me, they're also going to help me through this process, right? And I think that's what a lot of people think. If you're in that mindset where a hurricane is popping up, you just got your fresh license and you're ready to rock. Um, if like a, if you want short term money, you're gonna you're gonna go down there and you're gonna go through straight. It's gonna be a bad time for you, right? It, it will be a bad time for you. You'll be getting files. You're going to be missing damage. You're, it's, they're not going to be good files. It, the IA firms are going to appreciate your service. Thank you for your service. And then when you get back, they're not going to call you again because all those files had to go out and be reinspected. Your name is attached to that. And they're not going to bring you back, right? Unless another hurricane hits next year and they need thousands of buys, then hey, we'll use you again this one time. Um, what I have tried to show my friends that are coming out of these schools or into adjusting, <clears throat> I always try to give the advice that if you can grow and, and establish yourself in your home state um, by doing claims every day, just daily claims, even if it's a little bit every day, every day, and you can stay there, um, you will be the go-to guy. Uh, where I am in Kentucky, at first I was doing daily, I deployed, but then I had to make a choice, right? Because when I was on deployment, something happened in Kentucky. And they're like, oh my gosh, we don't have anybody in Kentucky and all this kind of stuff. So what happens if you grow your reputation in your home state or your local area and you don't deploy? If you don't deploy, right? Then you become kind of the go-to person because yeah. everybody else, when they see a hurricane, I mean, you could see it on these groups last week, right? Everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's... We're going to get all these claims. We're going to go. They're taking out, you know, they're buying new RVs. They're buying tr all this stuff. And and they're ready to go down there. And the states where those people live are empty now. So yeah. I always say, if you can tough it out and kind of grow your grow your reputation in your state, then even in the wintertime when it's slow for everybody, they're going to feed you first, right? Because you're not jumping ship every time a hurricane comes in. So that's pretty much what I do. I stay put, um, but I have a lot of friends that go to hurricanes, so you have to be prepared for it, right? You have to be prepared to go down to wherever you're, wherever the hurricane is, and you're dealing with catastrophic damage. The infrastructure is damaged. The cell phone towers are down. The roads are not accessible. The whatever hotels that may be available in the surrounding area are probably going to be filled because a lot of these people got displaced from their homes. Uh, gasoline shortage. Like I can just go on and on and on and on. Sure. So 
if you go down there and you get it figured out, even without those obstacles, uh, but you still have an obstacle that you don't fully know what you're doing, you're going to go quickly upside down, right? Because uh, the other thing that as I'm talking, I'm remembering that they're not going to pay you. If you're new, uh, a new person on a roster and you're getting claims, you got to figure you probably won't get your first paycheck for a month, and sometimes longer, just depending. So you you are literally using your own money. Uh, credit cards and this to find hotel rooms, to find food, uh, to to get all your equipment. So if if you've just got your license and you're hoping that a hurricane pops up so you can go do some stuff, you have to take all those things into consideration. If you want to make this a, a lifetime um, a, a job for you, like you want to do this until your 60s or 70s, I still, I know adjusters right now that are still adjusting and climbing roofs in their late 60s, early 70s. So uh, not that I want to be doing that, but because my knees are already kind of shot. But um, then you really have to do the necessary work on the front end, which is is yeah. making sure that you have done all the research, you have invested in yourself with some training and equipment, and that you really kind of get a feel for what's going on before you just think I'm going to get rich overnight, you know, and go to a hurricane. So just lots of things to think about. There's lots of videos. There's lots of people out there you can talk to, but uh, I, I definitely would, you know, think uh, think through it all the way before you just pull the trigger and and uh, with your license and a ladder and head down to her. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.